In my post on Instagram this week, I asked you whether you could spot the error in my image. Interestingly, nobody found the error. And in this video, I'm going to reveal it. I'm asking you today, how far can or should we go as photographers? My name is Wolf Amri, Wolf Amri on Instagram. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, here is the whole story. Last week we have been in the nature reserve in my hometown Vienna to photograph some wild geese. The town called Rust is also famous for its many storks that breed on the chimneys of many houses in the historic center. But the national park management also set up a pole with a nest in the middle of a restricted area. While filming we thought that will probably never become populated because the storks will fight for it all day long, considering that there are many storks looking for frogs and other animals to feed on and also some nesting materials right beneath it. After we finished our shooting, we went over to the other side and, you guessed it, suddenly a stork sat down on the nest on the pole and claimed its rights. It didn't take long until up to three other storks saw that and thought it was a good idea to dispute that right. As I often say, photography is all about opportunities. From this side of the area, the trees in the background made the stalks almost invisible. The camera had a hard time focusing and moreover, they have been backlit. I thought, okay, if I run back to our previous point of view, they will be gone. But it lasted for a while. And so at one point I decided to run back and try my luck there. You guessed it. As soon as I arrived, the others gave up and all that was left was one stork sitting on the nest, making his famous chattering sound to attract females. What shall I say? I'm not the most patient person and that doesn't make me the best wildlife photographer. Wildlife photography is a lot about patience and opportunities. Sitting and waiting for hours often gives you the best results. Well, and that's not really me, but maybe if I try to create some vlogs about wildlife photography in the future, I may even manage to sit and wait for a few minutes. However, I thought this was an opportunity that will not come back too soon, so I waited a bit because some of the storks stayed in that area to look for food. What can I say? I was rewarded because after a while two other storks took all their courage in both hands, or better say in both wings, and started another try to conquer the nest on the pole. And this time I was there to get these images. So the first thing we learn today, patience sometimes pays off. As far as settings go, I first chose 1 2000th of a second because there was quite some action that needed to be frozen instead of risking motion blur. F6.3 for aperture, which is the lowest number on my Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary. I zoomed it all the way, of course, because according to Google Maps, the distance was 97 meters, which is roughly 320 feet. I couldn't get any closer because the area is a nature reserve and is fenced. By the way, a crop sensor camera would have given me a bigger magnification. That left ISO, which I set to 320 to give me a slightly underexposed image. If something is pure white, like the stork's white feathers, I tend to underexpose slightly to not clip the whites. It's always easier to recover shadows than highlights. Unfortunately, stalks being black and white and the nest being in full sun creating hot shadows, I had the worst contrast I could ever get in a shot. A flash was no option because for one I didn't have one with me and it wouldn't have reached that far anyway. Beside that, it may have disturbed the birds. I've been talking about crop sensors. In case you haven't already, watch my video about crop versus full frame sensors because ISO noise is one of the factors that speak for a full frame instead of a crop sensor. But not in this case because I cropped the image in Lightroom anyway. And that does emphasize the noise quite a bit, leveling out the playing field in this regard. Of course, I didn't leave the raw images as they were. I always shoot in RAW because I want to make my images as good as they can be. So here is a first quick edit in Lightroom. These are the changes I made for that shot in case you want to analyze them. Okay, so much for the camera settings for the first few shots. I got a few nice images on what I do if I'm happy with my photos and the situation lasts. I try to improve the quality of the shots by taking a slightly riskier approach. So I went for a slightly lower ISO, namely 200, to reduce the noise and F8 to get an even sharper image. That required to lower the shutter speed. I chose 1 1250th of a second and that's the risky part. Depending if I catch the movement of the bird in the right moment or not, 
that might create quite some motion blur. But I had my shots already, so it was well worth the risk. However, that would lead to an even darker image, so I need to adapt my Lightroom edits quite a bit. By the way, I have a Lightroom tutorial series if you're interested. I'll link you to that at the end of the video. Let me know in the comments if you want a detailed tutorial how I edited this particular image, including the adjustment brush and the color adjustments. I could even give you the raw files so that you can try for yourself. Back to shooting. My camera, the Sony a7 III, is pretty good in regard to so-called ISO invariance. So the difference between raising ISO in camera compared to raising the brightness in Lightroom is pretty small. I know that and sometimes I try to exhaust that a bit so I can live with an even darker image. Most important for me is the fast shutter speed. After a few shots I got this one and boy was I happy! One thing I forgot to mention, particularly with wildlife, shoot in burst mode, so continuous shooting, with as high of a frame rate as your camera supports. Not only will that rather give you the perfect pose than shooting just one frame, moreover, one image may be out of focus, and if that's your only one in this series, you'd very likely start swearing. And talking about focus, for focus mode I used AFC for wildlife. In this case I could have probably used AFS though. When I finally looked at the images on the computer, the nest annoyed me more and more, so I just had to remove it. I could of course crop it, but that looks a bit amateurish, no? So I just had to get into Photoshop and replace the nest with legs. In order to get the same lighting, the sun was coming from the right, I was looking for a shot where the attacking bird who has his legs in the air was approaching from the right side, so I could use them to replace the nest with those legs. As you can see, when I zoom in, the sun clearly comes from the right side, so in order to get the perfect edit, I would need that. To my surprise, he always approached from the left side, so I had to mirror him. I removed the nest with one click, with a Photoshop action that I created. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that secret. And then I took the feet from the other stalk and attached them to the one defending the nest. And that was the answer to my question on Instagram. The error is the lighting on the feet of the defending stalk is off. It comes from the wrong side. Since you guys and girls didn't realize this kind of fake image, I wonder what you think how far we can go in photography to alter the reality, particularly with wildlife shots. I could even add another stalk attack attacking from the other side to the shot. That would make it even more spectacular, but it's fake. Would this even be possible in nature? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.